Rolink. Via Rolink. Very good. Uh, yeah, somebody requested that I do another <laughs> video describing the more mundane aspects of Roger's everyday character. <clears throat> Car Roger was a he was a very abrasive, kind of caustic person in a lot of ways. Like I mentioned before, he was like he really had a very very high opinion of himself. Um, and uh, he always thought he could outsmart everybody and have his way. And, it, and it's like, what did he like to read? Well, he, what did he read? I don't think he finished very many books. A lot of times he would start books, but I very rarely heard him talking about actually finishing any of the books he started. So I think it was one of those people. I know, like, as far as his TV viewing habits, he loved watching those cop shows. And I imagine he did a lot of readings to supplement his uh, knowledge of how cops operate and solve crimes. And that made him particularly dangerous because, you know, giving his, like, kind of perverted interests and... I would imagine proclivities, uh, his thinking he can outsmart the police, I think, made him a very dangerous individual. He had an obsession with, like, little girls, like, I guess, prepubescent girls. I don't know if he actually did anything, acted on that, but I do know that after he moved out of the valley, after the, the police sent him to rehab, I found that website of Rogers, and there's a picture of him and his wife, and she was, like, a really, really little short girl. So, uh, maybe he found a legal means to satisfy his bizarre lusts I don't know um what did Roger eat well Roger he was not a health nut vegan I can assure you his favorite uh, the things I remember him eating a lot of were like you know of course pizza and you know chili dogs and chili burgers and I, you know you go to Roger's room it was like it wasn't just like disorganized and messy my room gets disorganized and messy but his room was like a biohazard because there would be like empty pizza boxes Tommy's wrappers lying around empty beer cans coke bottles um, like, like, dried up food on, like, plates that haven't been washed. I mean, I'm surprised he never had, like, a, like, a, like, a roach infestation or something like that. It was, like, really, really nasty. Um, and, uh, like, where did I meet Roger? Well, ironically enough, Roger was one of the most racist people in the world. When I say racist, I don't mean, I don't mean, like, you know, uh, you know, wise about the differences between races. I mean, just, like, always, like, saying bad stuff about races and making jokes about other races. I actually met him through my black friend Frank Austin. Uh, I think it was back in high school. Um, and uh, it's kind of weird I met him. Black Frank was also sort of an interesting character. He was a, you know, he was a, he was a nigger. He looked very black. I did, he might have had, like a lot of American blacks, he might have had some white in him, but you really couldn't discern it from his features. But... It's him and his mother and his sisters. His mother, I think, worked for NBC, I believe. They all spoke and acted very white. I mean, they spoke as far as, like, socially, they, they acted and spoke very white. As far as their personal habits go, I can tell you that, that Frank Frank did his fair share of TNB, and I'm sure all his relatives did as, did as well. But, like, he did not talk black at all. As a matter of fact, he told me maybe he goes to, like, to like barbecues and stuff with other black people they always like totally like trip out on the fact he talks so white so he i guess would be another reason aside from the women's that he preferred to hang out with white people rather than black people um so geez uh i the only thing i remember specifically about roger back in like high school i was like walking through like the art building i think it was number four or whatever and uh Roger wearing his Pendleton and walking like a cholo, going, "Hey, you see what you do?" I, I was, just, I don't know, I was like trying to get away from him. I was maybe I was stoned or something. I was like walking really fast to get away from him. And everything looked behind me. There was this like creepy, like fucking, like Mexican gangster-looking guy coming towards me, talking that stupid freaking gang talk. And Roger was, incidentally, he was uh, part Mexican. I think it was his mother, his his birth mother's side. Of course, he was raised by a very, very white uh, family. Uh, and just I forget it was Mary Lou and I forget his dad's name. His name was Jessness. They were like very very white bread. His dad was like in the advertising business, and his mother was like always trying to break into films. I guess she got a lot of bit parts here and there. Because they didn't stay married very long, because that Mary Lou was a very t tedious person. Dad seemed really like, really nice though. Um, yeah, he said they should like his dad fine. Although his, his dad married some other woman after Mary Lou, who's I don't know. She, well, there was always, of course, there can be a little bit of tension between Roger and her, because I think, like, his stepdad, or his, his birth, no, his adopted dad, and his, the wife, his like stepmother they married, it's like, they had a kid, I think, between them on their own, and I guess Roger was kind of like the odd man out, I guess, 
and I think usually the women are like <laughs> really like caddy. I'm not going caddy's the right word, but you know they're they you know they just can't let that shit go. You know, so, I mean, plus he wasn't he wasn't the easiest person to get along with. He was always doing weird things and getting freaking trouble and stuff like that. Uh, I don't remember her name though. I remember she she lent me a paperback uh, edition of Being There. <laughs> I read that and I was going, and she bugged me like hell until I gave it back, which is probably the right thing to do because I probably never would have gave it back if she didn't bug me about it. <laughs> but that's all I can remember right now. Specifics about Roger. Um, yeah. See the one who did the poop art. Yeah, he he did some of his cartoons are up on the internet. You can find it if you Google his name. He has like some like fly, he calls them tasteless fly cartoons, or just a bunch of like stupid cartoons about how much flies love shit. <laughs> so. But he's dead now, so. They're well done uh, comics, cartoons too, or you just call them cartoons, a one shot deal, not comics, huh? Yeah, like like the one liners or whatever. Yeah, he was always drawing. One Very thing we good. did have in common was he like. I guess he was a big fan of the Mad Magazine as well, um, you know, and I guess he read that when he was growing up, so we had that in common, I guess, but other than that, he was, he, there's something wrong with that kid, <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I can tell when there's something fundamentally wrong with, with a person, and there's definitely something broken in that guy, I don't know what it was, I don't know if it was a mixed race thing, or, I guess, well, you know, he was, like, he, was, he was adopted, so he was, like, raised by his adopted parents, and then his adopted parents broke up, and then his real mom got back in touch with him, and he started having sex with his real mom, yet the guy was a mess, okay? I don't need to go on about this anymore, so uh, I, I hope that uh, satisfies some of your curiosity, uh, and don't worry, he's, he's dead now, so everything's okay. <laughs> okay, guys, see you next video.